Who wants to take here? To them. This morning, did you set out with the idea that you wanted to do what you did today, or was it a spur of the moment thing? Um, no, for the for the team and so on, it was a premeditated plan that we had, and um, that's a plan that's not hard, easy to make, but hard to execute. But the guys were very good, Nikki. Danilo and uh, Yanni Tyson, Larson, they um, <coughs> did what they had to do, the other guys as well, but they were the three that ended up in the move that went away, and then it was up to me to get across to them, which again, easier said than done, but um, it was, um, yeah, we managed to do what we did and all what we could and get into the group and get here. I was surprised that we could get here with such a good gap uh, at the bottom of the um, Gardens Pass climb. That was um, <coughs> thanks to the work. The three guys rode themselves really they ran to the flat out to the bottom of the Gardens Pass climb. We got there with, I think, a four minute gap, which was um, even more than I'd hoped to have. Um, <clears throat> still not enough in the end for me to uh, for me to move and make really significant moves on GC, but um, put us in a good position to play the play to the stage and still put uh, put Garmin under pressure. But interested in her means. <clears throat> when you got to Guardsman with that four minute gap, uh, were you thinking that? Um, you're, you were only 248 down on GC. I, I know the plan at the start of the day was maybe move Ben up in GC, but putting pressure on Garmin, but were you starting to think of your own GC hopes at yeah, that point? Obviously, yeah, obviously, we had a gap of four minutes. It's favorable. I was more interested in what the gap would be um, at the top of Garmin's pass and <clears throat> also at the start of the climb here. Normally, the GC teams and the GC riders will <clears throat> ascend much quicker on the last climb than they will on any other part of the course relative to the break, and they probably realistically to have a really good shot at the GC for them. We'd need maybe a four minute gap at the start of this climb, which is pretty difficult when we were there when we were only four of us left. But um, you, know, you try what you can, and uh, whether it's for my GC or for Ben's GC or for the stage, in, in the end, we didn't have a great deal to lose. Um, I don't know how what happened with Ben Hermans today. From what I saw on the timing board, it looked like he got dropped on the last climb. I don't know exactly uh, the details there. That was seemed unfortunate, but um, in the end, I think we, we rode really well as a team. and. <coughs> My main, my main goal was to come here and race. Race hard was my most most important factor. And uh, um, I'd say today, today, today we can put down in the book with a pretty solid dash. Sarah, what was the last couple of <coughs> meters like for you? When, when Joe was put up out of his seat, that's when you made it. What was the plan? No. It was nice. It was downhill. It was real fast. <laughs> <laughs> After riding uphill a couple of climbs today, that a downhill finish was quite refreshing. It's a bit strange so on the mountain face so I had a bit of an idea how the finish went, so uh, so I knew it was favourable to be coming off the wheel there, and um, <coughs> I had an idea what was, the, what was the right thing to do, and yeah, so it seemed to be a good idea, it was successful. For both of you, I'm, I'm interested to hear about the uh, tension that was in the break there. With Ricardo was putting his hand up, you were not necessarily pleased with that. Yeah, I, uh, I think when we were in four there, and, and like I said to him, you know, if we want to have a chance, at, and also at the stage when we have to cooperate there, and um, and it's part of, um, <clears throat> if we all cooperate together with 20k to go, where um, we're going to be equally tired at the end, but also uh, we're going to be racing against each other equally, and if someone just sits on all the, all the way, well, none of it, uh, four, one of four sits on all the way, the other three aren't going to be very happy to let them win the stage, so uh, it's in everyone's favour, I think, to cooperate, and so... Um, I think at, at the break, the group, we cooperated very well. Um, going into the telegraph, there was a lot of guys who weren't working, but obviously different interests, GC and so on. The Dalton guy had you know, Kelderman in front of me on GC, and, and um, there were a lot of different interests there, but when it was down to my score, it was um, <coughs> for myself and um, Alza. Was it was for, 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 for probably for GC, only interest for us, but of course, we're all in the, in the chance for a stage win, so it's uh, important that we work together, and had we had we not cooperated so well, we might have got short caught by the four behind us, which went cut off, as I understand. So those are all, all, all little factors that were considered in the end. Um, right into the finish, even if someone was going to get them on the gap. Did you want to add anything, Carter? Yeah, at the, the beginning, uh, my director said that we just stay on the wheel, but in the end, it was the, the better decision to, to ride with them because uh, as we saw in the end, it was very close. and. Um, so I think it was a good decision to work with them, and uh, otherwise it should be it would be close to that they catch up. Ricardo, can you, can you talk about the energy that you get when you're in a final climb like that? And you just see the people going nuts, and Tanner's 
flat like they were for you guys. Does that give you any, any bit of a boost, I guess, during the actual climbing? Uh, yes, for sure, because uh, five, six k to go, I was really, really empty and I had to really do uh, let the others go. But then with the people and everything, uh, it was was good for me and uh, I found some, some power. And, uh, yeah, so it was very nice, uh, the people there and uh, in general, the, the, the tour is it's very nice for me. It's the first time in the U.S. and it was great, so I really like it. Cadell team worked pretty hard today. You had uh, three guys in the break with you and uh, like power doing most of the work up there. Uh, but there's another stage left. Are we going to see some more tactics from BMC uh, to go for the overall or another stage um, win? Hopefully. I'm guessing um, all four of us that are in the break today are going to be a little bit tired tomorrow. But um, if we have a chance to try something important, we'll go again. Um, for all of us here, some of the guys like Brent, for example, uh, Americans, please the race in America. Our team is an American registered team. but. Um, <coughs> And like Ricardo says, we <clears throat> we really like racing here. It's it's in it's in some ways more enjoyable for us to race here than some of the even bigger races because because of the ambience and so on. And um, I think we'll um, be, we'll certainly try to be part of the race again tomorrow. Good you know, I'm uh, curious to hear your thoughts on Joey uh, Rothstar. He, he was probably virtually virtually unknown to you, or, and um, he rode really strong today. He was the uh, one. Dark red, the one that you yeah, yeah, just a few days on the break on the second day with uh, Ricky Sharp, wasn't he? Yes. Yeah, he got dropped just like five, yeah. he got caught five or ten days ago and he was riding right, right to the end. Um, I've heard a few stories about him and um, he's there, he's certainly got a lot of potential. What I uh, admired him when I saw him and when we caught him with 10k to go on the stage two, he was going absolutely flat out to the last metre, even though the group was 100 metres off him, he was still riding flat out. So he seems to have a lot of ambition and... Um, and um, I think with uh, you know, ambition and talent when it's combined, that's a uh, uh, rider can go a long way with that. So I wish him all the best with that. And um, I might have to go and speak to Mr. Hinkley about, uh, about his future there. Hey? When he uh, made his move at the end, were you were you worried or did you have it all under control at that point? Um, oh, for the most part. I've been pretty hard all day as well. I've had to look at the GC interest as well. But um, you know, it's a little bit, probably the more, probably the more. I'm sure the more experienced rider in the breakaway in terms of years, so uh, well, and uh, probably also got the more, more, most amount of grand tours in my legs as well. So this um, long day riding, riding pretty hard to normally always suits me suits me best, and um, yeah, I've kept things under control for the most part. Yeah. I'll go again for How did it feel for you being in the break out there, you know, flying flat out as opposed to? Before that, I think it was twice the break in the tour. Once they didn't want to ride with me, once I rode to the finish and moved up on GC, and that's why they never let, no one ever let me go to the breakaway ever again. Um, <laughs> it's not normally my thing, but it's, it's because people don't, don't want me to go in the break. I'm normally on GC or something, and so um, for that reason, it's really difficult, if not impossible, for me to get into a breakaway. And, um, and um, as my teammate was saying to me the other day, Brent Bookwater, um, in fact, I was in a breakaway in class year two that I was over. He said, yeah, Sam, it's probably the only time I've been more than a minute off GC in the last 10 years. So, um, so for that reason, I could get in the breakaway. But, but yeah, it's not my normal style of racing. But, uh, it's a nice change. Uh, on the end. Ricardo, just uh, before uh, you were talking to Cadell a minute ago about the um, descents, they were getting up close to 55 miles per hour. How is it, from a technical perspective, if you haven't ever ridden that or uh, descended that, I mean, how, how do you prepare for something like that? Uh, I was lucky because uh, the guy who got second, uh, Joey, uh, he told me on the top uh, that there's a tricky corner because there was really a sharp left-hander and uh, And it was good to know. Uh, I knew before that the downhill was not, the beginning was technical, but uh, the end was just almost straight. So it's good to know when you have some locals here and uh, they tell you some, some tricky, uh, yeah, of course, but uh, I have a lucky to get the information there. Okay. Ricardo, when you guys bridged up to, finally bridged up to Jens, uh, was there any discussion between you about uh, him working in the break and, and allowing you to sit in? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, we were a little bit worried uh, when Kedem was coming because uh, when the GC guy is in the group, uh, for sure they are not going to let us so far away. But uh, So we just said we don't ride because um, for what? Uh, we want to, to, to go for the stage and uh, if they catch us, don't bring nothing. So, But BMC was riding really, really strong. And uh, I think this, they showed that we, we get the four minute gap, almost five. So that helped really, especially all the uh, in the end, that uh, I guess that's it. Got one more question here. We may only take another one and let these guys go. Kidel, how, how aware were you that um, the overall leader, Danielson, was having a bike change? I mean, were you aware of that? No, the, no we were very serious with that. Radio is one of the details like that. We, we don't know. <clears throat> we were just getting the uh, time gaps. And of course, sometimes when they were isolated later, some of the race numbers. And, Beyond that, we we don't know what's going on, but for that reason also, I think it's for us four to always work together for the last minute to keep, keep as much gap as we can because things do go wrong. <clears throat> a GC leader can uh, go home a fight or something in the last three kilometres and and change everything for us, but at the same time, a big thing come back come back to us and chance to steal our chance for stage victory. So it's always something. That, um, while we're racing, we go, go to the end and um, yeah, racing without radios. We don't have that many races without radios, us in the world tour, so um, it's a little bit different, but um, that's fine. Thank you. All right, let's take a quick break and if you guys want to go down the line and talk a little bit about this. Uh, talk about how difficult it was today and how close you guys came to being caught by that group behind you. It was kind of touch and go there for a while, and I uh, got pretty close to you guys being swallowed up by the Yellow Jersey group. Could I I'll start with you? Um, yeah, like we were speaking about before, it's, I think as I understand the group, um, the main GC team team was standing within 30 seconds of us in the last few kilometres, and for that, um, I was pretty keen, even if it cost me a bit of energy to keep the rhythm going in the last few kilometres, um, but it's <clears throat> better to arrive at the finish in four than eight, and um, so, yeah, I think uh, maybe a couple of the other guys had the same idea there, um, keep the rhythm high and, and um, yeah, keep the gap open, and also for, I think for... Um, Lucas and myself, <clears throat> any 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 extra time was probably better for us as we tried to move into a good position on GC as well. Joy, was that the goal for you? I mean, did, did it become a race for you guys to stay away from that group before? Were you all in? What was the deal? Um, it might not look like it, but I was all in. Um, I didn't really have the confidence, maybe, to to give it 100% until 2K to go and. I glanced back and I could see the next group coming up. And, um, hey, I mean, we've been out there all day, so might as well sprint and get third or fourth or out of the guys that I was with and get caught by however many were behind us. And uh, Ricardo in the middle, uh, the Trek team obviously must have told you not to do any work to pull in that group, but then things kind of changed. It looked like you get a serious bit of work in the final few kilometers. Yeah, in the beginning, we said uh, we don't ride. The situation in the beginning, but uh, then we were with the four guys, so we we have to work together. And uh, I think without this work, we, we can make it to the finish. And uh, yeah, the last three four kilometer, kilometers, I was not sure that um, we can make it, but uh, yeah, it was in the end, it was close, and uh, we made it. Yeah. We'll go to Lucas User on the end in our vivid, most aggressive riders jersey. Lucas, you put in a big attack. How do you know when it's time to go on a move like that? What uh, tells your brain that now's the time? Oh, no, I probably should turn my brain off. Uh, just you know, follow, follow the speed of, of Cadell. Kind of know what he's doing. Um, you know, I thought I could get a jump on him and, and uh, not have to go to line with four guys. You know, I got three bigger guys than me that I alternate in my up sprint. Is, is a day like this a lesson learned for you? I mean, uh, did you gain some serious experience riding with these guys in the breakaway? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I kind of knew exactly what we were doing out there. And, uh, you know, I finished the line. I finished yesterday, and I said I'm going to go for the gun, and I'm not going to stop until I cross the line. And I did just that, you know, and Jens and I went on the, on the first climb, and, um, you know, I guess I kept, kept going to the end and, and ultimately uh, failed a little bit. But that's like this. I was going to say, if you could go back and do it again, would you still launch the same attack? I mean, do you still feel like it was the right move to make? Uh, I don't go back. I go forward. 
All right, we'll leave it at that. Uh, that's uh, Lucas User in our Vim and Most Aggressive Riders jersey. <coughs> those guys. Yes, uh, Ricardo, Fidel, thank you very much. They need to go. So, yeah, we will let uh, actually ask Mr. Ross to say. Let's talk to uh, Joey Roscoff. Uh, by far one of the biggest rides of your career. Talk about what it was like to realize that you were up there at the front. You were in serious contention to win a stage at the Tour of Utah. I mean, you're following Cadell Evans' wheel. That's got to be cool for you. Yeah, it was great. Um, I mean, I've never climbed this wall in my life, so it's just a cool experience. Um, and I was really doubting myself. I mean, I was so scared of guardsmen. That's like we stayed in Park City this year and last year before the race started, and I avoided going up guardsmen at all costs. <laughs> um, but once we got that, has like three pitches in it, and once we got over a couple of those, and and like. Most of the brakes just dropped. Stopped feeling good. Um, I mean, it led up to the last ramp of guards, man. Got a tail on point. Um, then I started to think about snowboard after that. And more than just trying to make it over guardsmen without getting caught by the group, uh, then it shifted to seeing if I could be the guy that I was with. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, that breakaway is kind of an added bonus for you after picking up the KOM points. How do you uh, kind of shift focus from that to without a real plan going into the day for being in a breakaway or for winning the stage? How do you start to focus on the end of the race? Um, I mean, what else can you do when you're down to four riders? That's, I mean, that's what I have to think about. And the KOM wasn't my objective. Um, at the beginning of the day, we just wanted someone in the break, and we knew that everyone was going to have to try because it was so hard to start um, from straight uphill, basically. Um, so, yeah, I ended up being the one in the move, and then going for the first couple KOM points just to, just in case anyone else in the break was close. I haven't really been following it that much. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, if I'm – at the front over time now I'm gonna get the points because I already have a decent amount in the competition, so just kept going for it. <clears throat> and then I guess like Ricardo said, it was on the last climb it was more working together to stay away from everyone chasing rather than I mean I really didn't care if I got fourth out of four on the stage if we stayed away because that would still be great for me, better than I've ever done on a climb. Great ride today. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Let's go to Lucas on the end. I want to ask uh, about the breakaway again. Now that Cadell and Ricardo are, are uh, out of the room, tell us about uh, the uh, the mood up there in the breakaway. It looked like there was a, a few exchanges of words during that break. <laughs> uh, when, when are we speaking of? <laughs> it was happening all day. In the 15 or in the... Um... In the fourth. Let's say in the four, in the final uh, few kilometers coming up to the line, it looked like Cadell really wanted uh, Ricardo to do a little bit more work, and I think both of you guys were on the same page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Jens and, and Ricardo sat on all day, and, and can't really understand why. If you, I mean, if there's an opportunity for a stage win, uh, you got to respect that, and you got to respect the race, and, and uh, that's what that's what we do out here. Uh, and then, you know, then it's, yeah, it is. Did you guys get to a point where you were trying to drop Ricardo out of that group of four? I mean, were you guys actively working together as three against one? I don't really think I, I, on that type of those types of rollers coming in, you're not really going to drop anybody in group of four. Um, I mean, we've been on the limit all day, really. Yeah. Um, that wasn't going to happen. It was just a matter of, hey, if you're going to be in contention, you got to do what you got to You got to hold off the, the guy that you're coming up from behind. Looking at the bigger picture uh, overall, how do you rate your tour of Utah and the team's race as well this week? I, you know, I, I got to call it a success so far. Um, you know, I went 10 weeks without racing. Uh, last race was really, the last race was Tour of California and, and with the nas with Nationals and a crash, crash with Taylor Fisher and then I was 40K on. And, um, you know, I had to kind of reassess some things after that and, and get back to training and get back to uh, some, some personal stuff. And, focus on the sport. And, you know, I did the best I could training to get to the Tour of Utah and, and, and top form. And I think uh, I've, I've just been getting better each day, and, and I think it's going to bode well for the Pro Challenge as well. All right. Well, questions for them? Sure. Joey, you obviously run 
won Redlands earlier this year, and that was a big win for you and kind of a tension getter. What does winning a stage at the Tour of Utah behind a Tour de France winner do for for your career? And uh, you're gonna be getting some calls from some World Tour teams, maybe. <laughs> I have no idea about any interest from teams. Um, I didn't win the stage this year. Oh, sorry. I mean, I won second behind, place. Yeah, behind. Sorry, behind. Um, but yeah, still, I mean, just being out there. Uh, last year, I could have come to that climb with a group of 20 and me sitting on all day, and I would have got dropped on the climb. So, the, I mean, this is a huge step for me. And I mean, I actually thought I might have him when I kicked with the last, just the last seat pitch when I could see with the driveway that we turned down to the finish. Um, He's been lagging a little bit on the acceleration, but obviously he knew exactly what he was doing, and he came over the last little hump just close enough to sort of get around my wheel and basically coast in for the, the win with that downhill to the line.